<laughs> Ow. Hot. Hang on, folks. I'm going to have terrible coffee. Oh, there we go. <laughs> My filter fell on me, but I got it fixed after a minor burn. <laughs> mm. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Eric Gill Jarhead here. And today I'm going to show you how to hook up an inverter to a battery. And honestly, this is basically how you can build your own power station. Or if you're interested in do-it-yourself solar power, well, this is basically the same thing. You need an inverter and a battery. You'll need fuses or breakers. You'll need some cabling, of course, and it helps to have a switch like I have here today if you're doing a power station, but if you're doing off-grid power, you don't really need this switch because you're gonna have breakers instead. And if you wanna charge that battery, you're going to need a charger. If you wanna use solar, you're going to need a solar charge controller and solar panels. But with a setup like this, there's no limits. You can pretty much do whatever you want once you get the first stage down, which is the inverter hooked up to the battery. I'm gonna get this battery hooked up to the inverter. It's half there now. I just have to hook up the positive. We're gonna turn things on, have a look at it, and I'm gonna show you how I hook this up and how you could use this as a power station, even frankly a portable power station, depending on how you build your box for it. And honestly, you don't even need to build a box. You could just hook the inverter right up to the battery and plug it in and go. And in an emergency, you could certainly do that without the fuses and the breakers and everything else. Though, obviously, it's much safer to use fuses and or breakers when you do this. But you could hook up an inverter directly to the battery and start powering something. It's just better to put the fuses and the breakers in. I'm gonna go ahead and finish hooking up this battery and then I'll show you what I've done and we'll go from there. All right, the first thing I need to do here is just go ahead and hook up my positive wire to the battery. And that's pretty simple. Now the inverter that I'm using today, I bought. I bought it just to do this for you actually, but I also kind of wanted to get another pure sine wave inverter. So I went ahead and bought this one here. It was fairly inexpensive, which is why I bought it. Okay, so what we've got is right here, I've got my main negative cable with a second negative cable that's going to go to my switch, and I'll show you that here in a second. And this negative cable comes over to the negative input on the inverter. And then you go from your positive, and in this case, I'm going to a switch. So we come from the positive down to my little switch here. And then from the other side of the switch, we come up to the positive side of the inverter. Now I have placed a 100 amp fuse between the positive cable and the inverter. I actually have a breaker coming, but it's not gonna be here for another five or six days, so I just use an inline 100 amp fuse. This inverter does come with a set of cables that you could use, but I opted for some heavy, flexible one-aught cables. Now, I've got on the side here a master switch that has a voltage readout. So if I go ahead and I turn this on, I can then flip that all the way to on, and I've now energized my inverter. Turn the power on on my little remote here because when you buy one of these, Lee Time sends you also a battery remote with it. Now this remote's telling me I have 13.9 volts, which is exactly what my switch on the other side showed me. We are energized, it's running, everything's up and running. I'm gonna plug my watt meter in and set my watt meter up to volts. So we're right at about 120 volts, that's good. 60 hertz, we're doing good there. If you look down here, you can see my meter is showing 13.9, and we're not drawing any power yet. As I said, I've got my negatives hooked up to the negative post on the battery. It's really important to pay attention to that. You don't want to reverse these. And I really like these Redodios because they come not only with negative here, but black ring right there and a black top. And then on the other side, you see you got positive and red and red. So that's kind of nice. Now we've gone ahead and we've just hooked this up. It just plugs in with a little RJ11 type cable. The first thing I'm gonna plug in is a 300 watt heat gun. We're just gonna go ahead, plug that into my watt meter and turn that on. Now we're running 119 volts, that's fine. We come down here and look. It's telling me that I'm getting 119, 270 watts total. Let's shut this off. All right, so that's a heat gun. When you get an inverter like this one, it does come with USB-C as well as USB-A on the side. You've got four 120 volt outlets. It does come with a ground cable that you can hook up. And then we've got this little remote that comes with it as well, giving me my voltage, my output, how many watts are being used. 
Now, I don't know about you guys, but I like my coffee. And if we've got an outage, well, <laughs> I'm gonna want some coffee, folks. So, we are gonna brew some coffee off of this power station. I like my creamer. All right, we'll just throw some in there. Put some water in this guy. I'm not gonna drink that much coffee, folks. My, my coffee pot, this is my, my kind of half broken coffee pot that I keep in the camper. Turn that on. Well, let's turn this on. Turn that on. Hit that to brew. And here we go, 1,070 watts. So we're pulling uh, quite a bit of amps here. We're pulling uh, about 80 amps probably. So 1,070 watts, it's showing a uh, battery at 11.9. That's because it's drawing it down hard, but that's all right. And away we go. Boy, that looks like water. <laughs> Why is my coffee not? Oh, if you're gonna do this, make sure that your filter doesn't fall down on you. <laughs> Ow, hot, hang on folks. I'm gonna have terrible coffee. Oh, there we go. <laughs> My filter fell on me, but I got it fixed after a minor burn. <laughs> I can smell the coffee. It's too bad that my filter dropped the way it did. <laughs> That's not good. Now my master switch shows 12.1 volts. You know, it'll be interesting to see how this turns out, but I will tell you that I have run this coffee pot on a 1500 watt hour power station when I was camping last and it didn't actually use that much power. Now, if you figure that this battery has 1,280 watts available, and I barely used any when I ran that heat gun, we're now gonna push it and use over 1,000 watts. Now, that was 1,280 watt hours. That means that I should be able to run it for an hour at 1,200 watts. And hopefully my coffee will darken up a little bit. It should, there it goes. It looks a little better now. <laughs> Now the coffee pot is telling me that it's done. The battery's back to 13 volts and it's not drawing anything. It really didn't take that long to brew. There we go, we've got coffee. It's on, it's still dripping a little bit, but we're gonna go ahead, it's a stop and serve. So I'm gonna go ahead. It's pretty light because, well, somebody, somebody should rebrew it. We're still dripping away here. I think what we're gonna do, pop this up. We're gonna do a rebrew. It's good to have a broken coffee pot, isn't it? We're gonna do a rebrew. You ever done a rebrew? <laughs> if you ever worked in a pulp mill like I did at one point in my life, or if you've ever been in the military, you know sometimes you just rebrew it to get it stronger. Hmm. So this is the in intake side, which probably isn't great to have steam nearby. And there's your exhaust side. I'll move this out away from the intake a little bit so it's not draw <laughs> drawn steam. Hmm. So there you have it, folks. I mean, that's about as simple as it gets. Now, there are some things about this that I'm gonna talk about as soon as it gets done brewing this second time and I can get myself a little bit stronger coffee because there are some big advantages to doing this over a power station and I'm gonna show you that as soon as this coffee gets, ow, gets done brewing. That's hot. It's twice I burned myself. <laughs> oh, good Lord, being a jarhead. Hmm. All right, so let's cover some of the advantages of building a power station or do-it-yourself solar power setup like this one. First of all, you could just get the battery, which this Rododio battery right now is on sale at $161, and this video is not sponsored. I, I paid for the inverter, the battery I've had a while. Eh, it's a good battery too, it's actually helped me out. I've used it to add power to my camper. I've used it for all kinds of things. It's a good battery, but 
That battery is $161 right now at Rododio. So $161 for that and $219.99, basically $220 for the inverter. So that's what, $381, you could have an inverter and a battery. That's 1,280 watt hours. Now, if you add the breaker that I'm waiting on, which is $29.99, and if you add the switch that I'm using, which is $26.09, the total comes to $437.09. So there are advantages here. One of those is you could add a second battery. If you added a second battery, that'd give you 2,560 watt hours for a total of $598.09. So for just under $600, you're looking at 2,560 watt hours and a 2,000 watt inverter with USB ports. And that includes the switch and a breaker. It's super simple. I hope you saw that in this video and I hope I helped somebody out. Do me a favor, if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments down below because I will always try to answer every comment that I get. Meanwhile, I'm gonna drop another video right here for you to check out. Hope you enjoyed today's video, folks. Y'all have a great day. The old jar head out. Mm. It's kinda cool to brew coffee off a battery and inverter sitting in your shop when I, I could plug it in the wall, but I didn't have to.